We have time for a couple of questions. We'll start with Romanian television. Tevere. Hello, my name is Vlad Ungar, news reporter, Romanian Public Television. My first question is for Secretary General. How will the war in Ukraine evolve in the near future? Will it have ended by the end of the next year, or will the war freeze in this stage? Wars are by nature unpredictable, uh, but what we have seen uh, over the last uh, weeks and months is actually that uh, the Ukrainians have made significant gains. They have been able to uh, first of all, push back uh, the uh, Russian invading forces from the north, from the territory around uh, Kiev, uh, and then uh, uh, stop a halt to the, the Russian uh, offensive in Donbass, and actually then push back the forces, uh, uh, liberate territory in Kharkiv and in Donbass, and also now in uh, the south. And this is, of course, a, a great example of the bravery, the courage of the Ukrainian armed forces, and, uh, and, uh, and we pay great respect to them, uh, the people of Ukraine, the political leadership of, of Ukraine, and, and uh, their armed forces. Uh, but of course, the support from NATO allies and partners have been also uh, vital for the uh, progress, the successes uh, we have seen the Ukrainians have been able to uh, make over the last uh, uh, weeks and months. Uh, let me add that the war didn't start in February this year. The war started in 2014. That was when um, uh, President Putin illegally annexed Crimea and started to uh, control the uh, eastern part of uh, Donbass. What happened in uh, February was a full-scale uh, uh, escalation, a full-scale war, uh, uh, war aggression by Russia against uh, uh, Ukraine. Um, I will not speculate about how long the war will last. I will only say... Uh, uh, two things, and one is that we are ready to uh, support Ukraine for as long as it takes. Uh, we cannot allow President Putin to win. Uh, that will be a, a disaster, a tragedy for, for Ukrainians. But it also will make us, uh, NATO allies, more vulnerable, because then the lesson learned from, uh, from, you, from Ukraine for President Putin is that he can achieve his goals by using military force. And that will be a lesson learned not only from him, for him, but also for other authoritarian leaders around the world. The second message is that uh, most wars end at the negotiating table. Uh, and at the same time, we know that uh, what uh, Ukraine can achieve at the negotiating table is totally dependent on the strength on the battlefield. Uh, so we need to strengthen their hand on the negotiating table by uh, providing a military support. And that's exactly what NATO allies are doing, to maximize the likelihood uh, for an outcome uh, which is acceptable for uh, Ukraine, and to minimize uh, the, 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 the time before we get there, uh, because uh, uh, the stronger Ukraine is on the battlefield, the more likely it is that we'll have a, a political solution that uh, ensures that uh, Ukraine uh, prevails as a sovereign independent nation in, uh, in Europe. Okay, we'll go to Euronews. Here. Yeah. Just behind you. Thanks. Mr. Secretary, you said recently NATO will help uh, Finland and Sweden if they are treated. What are the alliance's worries? Sorry? What are the alliance's worries about Finland and Sweden, yeah. Yeah. considering the delay of Finland and Sweden joining uh, in the context of uh, Hungary's oppositions? So first of all, uh, all NATO allies, all 30 NATO allies, made an historic decision in June this year at the Madrid summit to invite uh, uh, Finland and Sweden to become uh, NATO allies. Um, and then uh, we signed the accession protocols, all 30 NATO allies. Uh, and so uh, now 28 allies have already ratified uh, the, uh, the accession uh, protocol. Uh, so, so far, this has been the fastest, the quickest accession process in NATO's modern history. Uh, there were only weeks from uh, Finland and Sweden applied in May to we uh, invited them and signed the accession protocol, and, and already 28 have, uh, have ratified in the national parliaments. Um, um, recently, also Hungary made it clear that they will, uh, 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 also that, that the ratification is on the agenda of the 
Parliament uh, this fall. Uh, and of course, uh, I welcome that uh, Finland, Sweden uh, and Turkey are working together to implement the joint memorandum they agreed um, on the margins of the Madrid summit uh, to step up efforts to fight international terrorism. Uh, uh, Sweden has made it clear that there are, there are, there are, only, there are no um, restrictions on arms exports to, uh, to Turkey, and they have uh, established uh, what we call a permanent mechanism, uh, um, uh, uh, a way to work even more closely together on uh, the exchange of information on intelligence uh, to uh, support efforts uh, on fighting international terrorism. Um, so I'm confident that all allies will uh, ratify uh, the accession protocol. Um, I also welcome the fact that um, uh, Finland and Sweden uh, are in close contact with, um, uh, with Turkey. Uh, the, the Swedish Prime Minister was recently here. We, of course, we uh, discussed the accession process, and, uh, and he will go to uh, to, uh, to Turkey to meet with President Erdogan. I will uh, go to Ankara or to, to Turkey, to Istanbul, to meet with uh, President Erdogan in the near future myself. Uh, so, so we are in close contact with Finland and Sweden, and also, of course, in close contact uh, at all levels with, um, with our close uh, ally, uh, Turkey. Uh, then, what I said, and is still my message, is that Finland and Sweden are in a very different place now than before they applied. Uh, because uh, what we have seen since then is that uh, uh, allies have uh, um, issued security assurances to Finland and Sweden as part of the whole accession process. Uh, we have more NATO presence in the Baltic region, in the region around Finland and Sweden. Uh, Finland and Sweden participate in NATO activities, uh, civilian military, uh, and, uh, of course, uh, if there were any kind of pressure uh, against Finland and Sweden, uh, it, is in, it is inconceivable that the NATO allies should just uh, uh, stand idle by and not react. So we will react if there is uh, any kind of pressure against uh, Finland and Sweden. Associated Press. Thank you, Mr. Secretary General, Mr. Prime Minister, Mark from Associated Press. Mr. Secretary General, how has the Turkish government reacted to the new government in Sweden concerning um, their approach on reaching an understanding with Turkey concerning the accession to NATO? And Mr. Prime Minister, have you um, had any negotiations with Hungary, your neighbor, concerning the delay in the process of them approving Finland and Sweden? Have you taken part of any negotiations uh, with your neighbor? Thank you. It is broad political support uh, in uh, Sweden for uh, becoming a, a NATO ally. Uh, the, uh, the decision by the Swedish parliament uh, was uh, 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 there was an overwhelming majority in support of the uh, accession uh, application, uh, and uh, uh, both the previous and the current government is, uh, of course, um, uh, very committed to implementing the trilateral agreement that was made between Turkey, Finland and Sweden at the NATO uh, summit. Um, I welcome the very clear message uh, from uh, uh, Prime Minister Ulf Kristersson and the new government uh, to um, work hard on implementing the agreement uh, and to ensure that uh, there is uh, ratification by all allies as soon as uh, possible. I welcome the close contact uh, between uh, Stockholm and Ankara, uh, President uh, uh, Erdogan and, uh, and, uh, and Prime Minister Kristersson. Uh, and I also know that uh, Sweden is, uh, is at uh, different diplomatic and political levels uh, 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 in close contact with Turkey. So uh, this is, of course, strongly supported by me. I will uh, go to Turkey uh, myself in the near future. Uh, and uh, we do this to ensure that uh, as soon as possible, uh, 30 allies would have uh, ratified uh, the accession protocol, enabling Finland and Sweden to uh, become uh, full members of the alliance. <clears throat> Romania has understood from the very beginning the relevance of uh, Sweden and Finland to become member of the alliance. And uh, we uh, uh, value from the very beginning um, how more capabilities they bring within the, the alliance. So uh, 
we uh, ratify uh, the agreement from the very beginning of the process. And uh, of course, right now, specifically, we are not discussing with our uh, neighboring country, Hungary, in regard to clarify how we can uh, support uh, on this decision. But uh, we are always discussing with the Secretary General, with the NATO headquarters, and if necessary, we are open to be part of uh, this process. So answering your question, till now, we did not talk specifically on this issue. Thank you very much. This concludes this press conference. Thank you so much.